Hi, I'm Byron Elton from Cancer Vax. And today we're talking to Don Elm, a good friend of mine from Los Angeles, to hear his story about cancer, the second leading cause of death globally. So, Don, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. So, Don, uh, let's just talk about your current situation. You are currently dealing with stomach cancer. Stomach and, and colon cancer, yeah, but and colon. So you're no uh, no stranger to cancer, and uh, so let's start with the first with with your colon cancer. Tell us like when you found out about it, how long, obviously the date, and then uh, just kind of huh. what happened and where you are today with that. Well, I went in. I saw that I was going. I had some um, stomach pains, and so I went in to see my uh, GP. And uh, I ran some tests, and so it was, it was kind of <laughs> kind of funny. This was in uh, 2006, I guess it was November, um, early November. And so he said, uh, "Well, everything looks fine, except for this little one, this little little number here." And uh, he says it's a cancer. Uh, like indicator and I said okay and he kind of looked at me and said uh is your wife here <laughs> I, said, oh, dear. I don't know we both said we took two separate cars but she might be here she had some other things to do and so they put out a call for her and she was in the waiting room so he, she came in and I remember I was sitting like this she's at the standing at the door there he gave, went through the same things that I just told you and um she burst into tears. So I looked at him and I said, oh, you're telling me I got cancer? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> I go, okay. Because I thought, well, okay, I got a cancer. Some some reason I have a cancer number there. We got to find out why, you know, because obviously I don't have cancer, but I do. So um, then I got... Uh, Admitted, we went to the got admitted to the hospital. Met my oncologist, Dr. Lee, and this is a Kaiser. And she, uh, I, she was stopped this on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> she's just, just going back and forth and back and forth, and she's just, I want that out of there. Let's just cut it out. I said, sounds good to me. Let's cut it. Out. <laughs> so I, it took admitted me. And uh, Dr. Zimmerman was the surgeon, and she I cut it out. She says, uh, I said, what are you going to do, cut out a couple of feet? And she says, no, just one. And I said, oh, I was kidding. <laughs> she says, you'll never miss it. And she was right. Never missed it. And so that was, and, she, and so then uh, so I had um, three spots on my lungs. They said, uh, that there, there were three, so they went in. It says they should be dead, but we just want to go look. And that was that was later. What year was this? Two thousand six. Okay. Christmas two thousand six. Okay, so so we had anemia and some other things. And they did. I had E. coli, a bunch of weird and stuff, pneumonia, and but then later. So there was later that I get. I guess so. I went in on, in Jan. I think it was Jan, January, or February. I went in to see the oncologist. Dr. Lee, and uh, so she went through a bunch of things, what they were going to do, and how the chemo would be, progress, and so um, one way she was all done, she said, I said, she said, she said, well, do you have any questions? And I go, yeah, I've got two. Uh, well, what can I eat, and how long have I got? So she says, well, anything, and about two years. I go, oh, Two years, I was thinking more like ten. Oh, never know. So, so, so your doctor told you you had two years to live. Yeah. Wow. So on the way home, Cheryl was upset because she said she told you you could eat anything because she thinks you're going to die. <laughs> and I go, yeah, well. that's right. <laughs> so after about six years, uh, I went on a visit to Doctor Lee. She said, "We got to talk about your diet." And I said, "Wait a minute! You said I could eat anything." <laughs> she says, "Yeah, it's because I thought you were going to die." <laughs> oh wow. But I'd lived too long, so we talked about what I couldn't 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 eat. I had a hundred hundred twenty seven chemo sessions, 
they started out every other week and then they went to every three weeks and then they went to every four weeks. And I'm not sure what you, well, I don't know if you care about that. But my, my oncologist died, unfortunately. She was a really fabulous, fabulous lady, a little Korean lady. And, and uh, she went up to Stanford to have something operated on her brain and died on the operating table in the second operation. So I got a new one, Dr. Fowler, and she's awesome too. And uh, uh, yeah, and, the, oh, and then they stopped the chemo. After 127 chemos, they stopped it. I was on a maintenance and they stopped it because my heart wouldn't, they said my heart wouldn't take it anymore. Okay. And then I guess they decided my heart got so bad, they better do some heart surgery. So I had open heart surgery. As a result it. of your colon cancer? I don't know. I know because I've always had a murmur. Yeah. So, and but the, I, ke the chemo obviously wasn't helping. <laughs> Gone wasn't helping. It, that's that's hard. So yeah. I had, um, so I got a valve replacement and a triple bypass. Got sewn up. I said, "We can do anything now." So I'm good. But but my my numbers were always good. There's that I can never remember CAE or CEA um, number that it's supposed to be below four. When they found the cancer, it was sixty seven, I think, sixty something, and. Um, so, but after they started the chemo treatments and after the operation, it was always like 1.8, 2.2, somewhere right on there. And then after they stop them, stop the chemo, it still stayed there. It was still, you know, right around two, just above or below two. Well, okay, great. And uh, we went on like that. At one time, my new... When I got my, well, when I first met my new oncologist, Dr. Fowler, she said, well, Dr. Lee was more on a maintenance type. I'm more on, let's just stop the chemo. And when it comes back, then we'll treat it. And so Cheryl says, well, how long does it usually take to come back? And she says, oh, I don't know, six to eight months. And she says, Cheryl turning white. <laughs> she says, uh, okay, well, we'll just keep up the, the maintenance that Dr. Lee started. So I kept with keeping up the maintenance. And then they stopped it because of my heart and everything else I just told you. And uh, so we just kind of went along like that. And we'd been having, pet. they would give me a PET scan about every four months, three to four months. And it was always just fine. And a year ago, April, um, they came back and they said, um... Looks like you got another problem here in your in your land. I'd been having some of it, some uh, chest pains, not in my heart, but right over my uh, esophagus. And so they went in and checked things out, and I had the stomach cancer. And uh, Cheryl asked him, and she said, "Well, is this like the colon cancer that spread to the stomach?" And they, "Oh, no, 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 no. This is totally new cancer, different." And it was right where my esophagus met my stomach. And I said, well, that's not where the pain is. The pain's right behind, behind my sternum. And I go, yeah, that's where it is. And I go, your stomach goes clear up there. So, all right. So that's where it is anyway. And so we started, um, do you want to go continue with the stomach or no? Yeah. Well, that's what you're dealing with now, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's what I'm dealing with now. So, well, you said you wanted to talk about the colon first and, and, uh, but with the stomach cancer, they said um, they would give, you know, they started chemo. So we, we started chemo, went through, they were going to do four sessions of chemo, have an operation, and then four more sessions. And then we came back with another, talked to them again, and they said, you know, we have so much problem uh, getting people to the end. I'm not exactly sure what he meant. I think they meant people just didn't want to take any more chemo. So they stopped the chemo. I don't know. <laughs> um, but they said, he says, what I really, I think what I want to do is give you eight chemos and then, and then operate. I said, yeah, you're the doctor, whatever. That's fine. So we did that. I took the eight chemos and they went in and checked it, got a PET scan. And they said, um, the cancer's grown instead of shrunk. 
so they weren't anxious to uh, operate. So they said, I think my oncologist said, I think what we'll try instead is immunotherapy. I, and I had just read something about immunotherapy, and it sounded great to me. They've been having some success with it. So we started um, immunotherapy, and that's really a lot easier. <laughs> it's like one bag for 45 minutes instead of six bags for six hours. And uh, <clears throat> and the side effects were min really minimal, kind of made me drowsy, but that was about it. And uh, so I was really happy with this. And so then they checked me. Uh, I got another PET scan. And they said, uh, the immunotherapy really didn't do that much. Yeah, a little bit, but not that much. So I said, okay, what's next? To me? So they started me on some, some chemo. And it was going to be every week, every Monday for three weeks, and then a week off. And then every Monday for three weeks, and then a week off, every Monday for three weeks, really. like that. And I'm not sure how long I've got my schedule out through September, I think. And um, so, but then it came back. We did, an, they did another PET scan, and it had metas metastasis. I don't know if that's the word. I had it attached anyway to my aorta, my uh, liver, and my uh, pancreas so that was that was when it changed from stage three to stage four so now they're calling it stage four stomach cancer and uh so that's where i am now i'm in the middle i just ended up my third session of uh chemo on uh yeah, the first set of three and they gave they said they're going to give me two different chemos on the first on the first day the first one the first thing and then the other two would be just one but then when i and that was true for the second one but for the third one i mentioned that to the nurses and they go oh no you're getting two today so it's two one two and uh, i guess that's the way i i see uh my oncologist on friday this is wednesday i'm gonna see my oncologist on friday I, i'm scheduled to take start the series of three again on Monday. So that's where I said. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit, Don, about the um, impact of the chemotherapy sessions had on you? What impact it had on your body and your health? And mm. Well, they weren't fun, but, you know, I mean, like I remember Dr. Lee talking, asking me that question, how are you feeling and how are you doing? And I always say I'm doing fine. When, I mean, nobody wants to hear you. <laughs> all the problems but um but doctor's different you know she's asking for a no, different reason so i said well not not as bad as i thought it would be you know it wasn't as bad as i thought it'd be and i said i don't have my you know like I'm, you see on people with chemo in movies or something like that and they got their head in the toilet and i said i don't have my head in the toilet or anything like she's oh we don't do that anymore <laughs> so i go oh, okay that's good and because they give me so much medicine also to combat the effects of chemo yeah. that it's not as bad as it used to be. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm listless. I, it's affected my brain. That's for sure. My memory, I, you know, I, uh, I might have to think hard to remember your name from time to time, you know, and even as well as I know you. And, uh, even sometimes uh, different family members. And, oh, and the, the neuropathy. We didn't talk about the neuropathy. Um, when I was with uh, Dr. Lee, I got neuropathy in my hands and feet, and uh, pretty bad. And uh, so one time I came in, and Dr. Lee was had a, another business, so I had a substitute, and the substitute was Dr. Fowler, my current um oncologist and she says well how bad is the neuropathy and i go i don't know i never had it before oh, is this is normal or bad or good or and i thought for a while i said well i can't button my shirts anymore my wife has to button my shirts for me and she goes oh if it's that bad uh we won't give you chemo today you wait uh i'll give you you taught you tell dr lee that and uh so i told dr lee that and she said oh i didn't know it was that bad and, 
I just thought this is what you know, the way things went, so I didn't mention it that much. But um, so she, you know, changed the this the chemo, the old chemo. I got the neuropathy, but I kept my hair. And the new chemo, the neuropathy got a little better. Still have it, but it got a little better, and um, I lost my hair. And I lo I'm losing. I lost my hair. I got a little fuzz there, but on this rounds of chemo, I lost it too. But um, but the yeah, the neuropathy got a little better, but still, it's like my feet are really weird. Uh, feels like I'm walking on about. Let me get that the camera there. there about that much lard under each foot. Oh. <laughs> it's just strange. And um, okay. hmm? okay. yeah, it's fuzzy. It feels like I got the. Uh, seven up in my legs up to about about just above my knees and my hands um you know i can still use them and things but um it's like fine motor nerves and i can button my shirt now but i don't know if it's better or because i've learned to compensate uh, but uh, have that and then um so, so Don, the the, the yeah. good news is you you defied all odds and you're still with us. Yeah, this is sixteen and a half years later. So, yeah. I, I'm, so I'm curious. My, my I'm, doctor, my GP, just calls me the Miracle Boy. <laughs> oh, does he? That's great. So I'm, I'm just, curious, just in terms of, um, and you can share what you like, but obviously these treatments aren't uh, inexpensive, and insurance plays a big part of this. Uh, has has that all been covered for you? Have you been okay in that sense, or has it affected you? Oh, it's horrible. They, they charge me ten dollars a visit. Ah. <laughs> is that because of Medicare? No, it's because it's Kaiser. Oh, nice. And uh, Medicare helps pay for the kind, but Kaiser is expensive. But uh, I worried about that uh, because you know there's a kind of a community of people, cancer patients and stuff, and you get talking to people. There were some people that were just worried sick because their insurance was not going to cover them anymore. You know, they're coming up to their max. And um, I said, really? That happens? I didn't know that. So I went to the Kaiser um, administration and I said, does this run out? And they said, not as long as you pay your premiums. <laughs> so I go, okay, I'm, I'm good now. No, I would be... Um, I was going to say we'd be in the poorhouse, but no, I wouldn't have stood for it. Uh, I'd be dead. You can tell us the doctor. Oh, yeah. Well, Cheryl's telling me. She she looks at all the... We get the, the paperwork on it. And every chemo is like 32000 And plus the doctor. And, you know, plus, <laughs> plus, plus, plus. The the pharmacist. pharmacist. And we get that. Yeah. He comes around and helps. He's a million dollar man. Oh, six million you? six million dollars man's got nothing on me so the the estimate of all your treatment has been over six million dollars mm, probably yeah 127 and now eight more and now three more and, and uh yeah it's expensive wow. i don't i just feel so bad for people that, and then the hospital uh, yeah and then the hospitalizations for things and yeah uh well, two things. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And uh, we're well, so glad you're still with us. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's nice. Yeah. The last thing I would ask you to come. I feel on. bad because it, it is costing, you know, the money. I don't pay the money, but somebody's paying all that money out there. Money, yeah. I wish I could uh, transfer it to somebody else. You know, yeah. like, like a kid. I just, uh when children get it, I just go crazy. Uh, well, the last thing I would say is, you know, th th there's a person that gets the cancer, but the entire family has to deal with it, right? And so the impact that it has on your immediate family is pretty significant. Oh, uh, Cheryl, for sure. And uh, and, and my daughter. And, and uh, but, but, you know, the friends... Uh, especially in the church, but other friends are just amazing. I mean, it's not all bad. I, 
I would, I would, I always say that before cancer, I always think I could count on my one hand, my really close friends, and maybe have some fingers left over. And now it feels like the whole world's my friend. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm doing fine. You know, we're and financially, like I said, we're we're just fine because of um, of Kaiser and then insurance, but. Um, But I, I still get, even now, I mean, uh, I just had to, I had a friend drop something off, you know, some some uh, some food off. And I get calls constantly, how's Don doing? What can we do for you? What can we, you know, we really want to do something, you know. <laughs> it's really nothing to do. We're okay. You drive around and, and I can't complain. I mean, got a nice house to live in, you know? Giant screen TV, got a great chair to sit in. Got the comforts, you know, all the comforts. I can travel around the world just sitting in my house. And think about some people who have to go through this and not such comfort. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, everybody's always, um, you're in our prayers and I really feel those. Um, it makes all the difference. I, I was, I want to say, well, I'm glad I thought of this. One thing my GP told me, he says, I want, I want there were two things he, he said. He said, one is he wanted me to buy this book. It was called uh, Beating Cancer with Diet. I had this fold out on it in the middle of the book. And it was like good stuff, okay stuff, medium stuff, not so hot stuff, and really bad. And really, right on the bottom was sodas. And I had changed from uh, Cokes to to Dr. Pepper, to diet, to caffeine-free diet. Now, well, that's just, that's just uh, colored water, you know? So what's the problem? No, I just said sodas. And I was, that's what must have given me the cancer. I don't know. But but the other thing was, he says, I want you to laugh. And he says, I don't mean just, <laughs> isn't that funny? He said, I mean belly laugh. <laughs> and I said, well, I like to laugh, so... You know, so I try to watch um, America's Funniest Home Videos and things like that. And, and gut fill just cracks me up at night and uh, every night. And um, and I think that really helped. I mean, and, and just pretty much staying positive, you know, saying, you know, this isn't all that bad. Uh, it could be a lot worse. It could be, you know, if this had happened... 20 years ago, I mean, I would have only lasted two years. Because yeah. Cheryl went and looked it up on um, on WebMD, and they said 1% chance of living past uh, two years of stage four colon cancer. So I'm a 1%. Here you are. So now if I could just be a one percenter financially. <laughs> the $6 million one percenter. Well, Don, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Pleasure. I hope I didn't bore everybody. No, 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 no. We'll uh, we'll uh, take a look at this. And uh, you did remind me, this won't make the podcast, but you did remind me, I don't know if you ever remember a guy in Saturday Night Live by the name of Jack Handy. He used to do a thing called Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. That name sounds familiar, but we can't. Anyways, he was a comedian, and he, one of yeah. them was, he says, there's deep thoughts by Jack Handy. Oh, deep thoughts. <laughs> he says, you know, when I grew up, my father uh, believed that laughter was the best medicine. Yeah. He said, that's probably why a number of us died of uh, <laughs> cancer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're so delighted you're still here. Thank you for sharing your story. And there's some bread and soup coming your way. Can't wait. <laughs> okay, my friend. Thanks so much. Thank you.